lifts a new phyrexia. Vorin collects his personal splicer. Ictetic harvests and grafts together an army of fearless automatons in the hunt for the perfect predator. Having crafted his ruthless golem army, Ictetic scours the multiverse in search of the greatest military engineer to arm them. He found the most brilliant weaponsmith on the backwater plane of Dominaria, Togo. And Togo armed this legion with the mightiest weapon in his arsenal. Hi, I'm Matthew. Welcome to Downtime Activities. Today, I'm going to be doing a deck tech on my commander deck featuring the partner pair Togo and Iktekik. I call this deck the War Machine. The War Machine is a commander deck led by Togo Goblin Weaponsmith and Iktekik Salvage Splicer. Both of these creatures create tokens, and the combination of these two tokens is how we're going to try and win the game. Togo has a landfall trigger, although landfall itself isn't written on the card, that creates colorless artifact tokens called rock and can be equipped to your creatures and thrown to deal direct damage. While Ichtekic creates golems and benefits himself and goblins whenever artifacts are sacrificed, causing the innate synergy between these two cards. At its core, this is a landfall deck. Like all the other landfall decks in the EDH format, you need to have lots of good ramp options and green gives you that. This deck also sets itself apart with some of its interesting sub-strategies and other interactions that exist in it. For good green ramp spells, we're going to play all the ones we can get a hold of. Your classic cards like Rampant Growth, Cultivate, Sky Shroud Claims. Things that put multiple or at least one land onto the battlefield, an extra one from your normal land drop, to cause extra landfall triggers. Along with this, we'll play cards that give us additional land drops. Cards like Azusa, Lost But Seeking, Wayward Swordtooth, Mina and Din Wildborn, and others you can think of that'll give you additional land drops, giving you additional landfall triggers, triggering Togo more times, and in the end, getting us more rocks. We also want to have some interaction with our graveyard and lands. There are some ramp spells that will do this for us. Cards like Roiling Regrowth, Crop Rotation, Scape Shift, they can ramp us, get us specific lands we need for certain situations, and all the while get us land drops and lands in our graveyard. We'll also have some lands that themselves sacrifice to go to the graveyard, either searching out other lands or giving us other effects. Cards like Wooded Foothills, Terramorphic Expanse, Myriad Landscape, Tectonic Edge, Memorial to Unity. There's lots of options here in red and green that let you search out specific lands, let you get in a spell-like effect, or sometimes search multiple lands like Myriad Landscape. In combination with this, we will use some graveyard land recursion. Cards like Ramanup Excavator, Ancient Green Warden, Splendid Reclamation. These get one or multiple lands from our graveyard, giving us the ability to get landfall triggers with no lands in hand. This continues to get us rocks, and gives us the ability to chain things like Tectonic Edge together over and over again, wiping lands or getting multiple uses of memorials to have multiple effects over and over again, grinding value from the graveyard. We'll also throw a Titania, Protector of Argoth, in here to get those lands returning from the graveyard triggers and build ourselves an army of elementals. All this coming together to make the classic landfall deck. Along with that, you need your classic landfall cards. Cards that give you those triggers as you're getting all these lands into the battlefield, whether it's from your hand, your library, or your graveyard, and give you value and possibly win conditions. A couple of your classic value landfall triggers, cards like Lotus Cobra and Valakut Exploration, will ramp you further and give you card advantage while you're trying to build an army of robots and arm them with an army of rocks. You also get some finishers in landfall. There's lots of landfall trigger finishers. In green, in red, in green red, you have lots of options. Some of my favorites are Scoot Swarm to get an army of insects, Morog, Fury of Akum to give you multiple combats, and Omnath, Locus of Rage, to give you an army of elementals that if they die, dome your opponents out. How this deck stands out from your other traditional landfall decks 
in a big way is its artifact theme. Artifacts play a big role in this deck, which is not the typical for red-green decks. For our artifacts, we have lots and lots of rocks being built as a byproduct of Togo being on the battlefield and us casting all of these ramp spells. This means we're going to have lots of artifact enter the battlefield effects. Cards like Reckless Fireweaver, Quicksmith Genius, and Arcbound Crusher give us damage to our opponents, card advantage, and selection, and a big game-ending threat if it's left alone long enough in Arcbound Crusher. We will also have a lot of rocks left over that we won't be able to throw at our opponents, and what better to do with those than have an Atog eat them, or better yet, a Megatog eat them. We can also sacrifice them to cards like Trading Post to get more card advantage, turning our rocks into fresh gas in our hand. We'll also have some effects that can tap and use multiple artifacts to accrue us value or use as removal. Cards like Inspiring Statuary and Gear Per Aether Grid give us a way to ramp out some of our big spells and a low-key, very powerful direct damage source when you have a pile of rocks laying around. We also have some spells that are just additional sources of getting lots of artifacts to help this artifact theme come together. Cards like Gadrak, the Crown Scourge, and Brass's Bounty, and crowd favorite Goblin Kaboomist, because how could you not have a goblin who makes mines in your War Machine Goblin Rock deck, give you a steady stream of artifacts to use with these other artifact enter the battlefield and artifact tap effects. We'll also run some lands that are themselves artifacts or create artifacts when they enter as a free way to get an artifact trigger and a land trigger, hitting both of the metrics we need to get the triggers we want in this deck. Cards like Great Furnace and Tree of Tales are artifact lands, and Gingerbread Cabin, so long as you meet its requirement, makes an artifact as it enters the battlefield. These are low-key some of the best cards in the deck because they're triggering both ends of what you're trying to do. Because rocks are equipment and have a very cheap equip cost of only one, we can use that with some other cards that interact well with equipment and get big game-ending threats out of very small creatures. Cards like Goblin Gavalier and Champion of the Flame get big bonuses and have Trample to bash through for huge damage if you pile a bunch of rocks on them. Then you have Valduk, Keeper of the Flame, who if you give him lots of rocks will once again make an army of angry elementals to tear your opponents apart. A sub-theme of this deck is Golem Tribal. This Ictekic portion of the deck gives you value for all these artifacts you're sacking to make an army of huge, powerful robots that are throwing the rocks and getting bigger as they do it. Our Golem producers are cards like Hammer of Perforos, Geode Golem, and Mall Splicer. Hammer of Perforos lets us turn all these extra lands we're getting onto the battlefield into golems, as well as giving all of our creatures haste, which allows us to equip rocks right away and throw them, avoiding board wipes and things like that slowing us down, leaving us with just a pile of rocks. Mall Splicer and other cards from the Splicer cycle both create golems when they enter in and have effects that give bonuses or protection to the golems we create and naturally cast. Geode Golem is really awesome in this deck because he can trample through, hit your opponents, and get Togo or Iktekic back out onto the battlefield for free. And if you've given him lots of counters through Iktekic triggers, he can stick around and do that over and over again, so that if your opponents are removing your Togo or your Iktekic, you can be returning them free of charge, no mana cost, and keeping that value train rolling. To round the deck out, we're going to have some solid interaction spells. For removal, we like a couple of targeted removal spells that are sort of catch-all removal spells. Things like Chaos Warp and Beast Within that destroy just about any permanent we need to get off the battlefield for one drawback or another that's overall not a big loss. Shatter Skull Smashing is an all-star hit here because it's a removal spell that is also a land. You have cards in the deck that lets you return lands to your hand and would allow you to have a land in the early game when you need it and cast Shatter Skull Smashing, taking out a couple of threats later on when you don't. This versatility is super useful here. We'll run a couple board wipes, cards like Chain Reaction, Blasphemous Act, to wipe out all the creatures, and low-key powerhouse Calming Verse 
to destroy all enchantments that you don't own on the battlefield. If you run up against an Enchantress player, this card is nuts. A kind of final note and cheeky little interaction you can throw into the deck is any sort of Death Touch enabler. Death Touch and rocks go together perfectly. Death Touch cares about the creature dealing damage, not combat damage, but damage. And an important piece of rocks is that when they tap, the creature deals the damage to the target, not the rock. So anything with Death Touch will kill any creature. Your 2-2 Togo can throw a rock at a 10-10 whatever, and it will die if he has Death Touch. My favorite card to do this is Basilisk Collar. It's an equipment, it comes down cheap, it equips cheap, and makes it so that any creature equipped with it and a rock can kill with a single mana and a tap. That was the War Machine. If you have any questions about the cards or the deck, any ideas for cards that could be included, or any other things you want to talk about, commander related or otherwise, feel free to start that down in the comments below. We also have down in the description below the full deck list as a link on Tap Down. You can check it out, see the cards I didn't talk about in this video. Please like, comment, subscribe, share with friends, and keep an eye out for any of the future videos we have coming to the Downtime Activities channel. Thank you, and see you next time.